the equation that we derived earlier, which is also equals to uh, E naught 1 plus E minus I phi, and then you multiply with E minus I omega T. So phi is given by K times delta X. K delta X is given by, uh, sorry, so this is the spatial phase shift, which is also equal to 2 pi over lambda times delta X. Because the, the unit here is in meter or centimeter, we have to translate it into radian, right? So you need a translator to do that. So we need K. K is the translator that translates from the spatial unit, uh, meter, centimeter, into radian. So that's why you multiply with K. So uh, this is it. Mm, okay. Now I would like to introduce you to the phase uh, diagram. Phase uh, diagram. Okay. Because we are dealing with um, the, the coherent lights, I need you to ignore this for a while. To ignore the term here for a while. Do not ignore it completely, but for the time being, you just uh, assume that you cannot see it on the screen. You just focus on this one. So the amplitude E naught prime, this is E naught prime, yeah, E naught prime. So E naught prime is equals to E naught. If I bring uh, E naught inside, then I'll have E naught plus E naught E minus I phi. And this one, I can also write it in this particular form, E I times zero. Because zero times I is zero, exponent to the power of minus zero, Exponent of 0 is given by 1, so it is 1. Okay, so this is the exponential form of 1. So E minus I 0 is equal to 1. So I have my wave from source number 1, and then I have my wave from source number 2, combining from here to here. Okay, so the guy over here, the wave number 1, is E1, E0, E minus I omega T. This one is E2, E0, E minus I omega T. But the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here, they are different. For example, if I draw, okay, if I draw some dotted line here, so there is a difference here. So this is delta X. So I have to, I have to minus phi minus phi here so here will become plus sorry plus yeah plus i have to add phi so that i will take into account the delta x so delta x multiplied with k is given by phi so phi is in radian so now this one um, there is no phase shift so phi one is equal to zero this one, this is number two. This is wave number one. The phase difference for wave number one is zero. Okay? Because this is the, um, we are doing this uh, with respect to wave number one. So that's why we, we just take uh, the phase difference of S1 as zero. So the phase difference of S2, the wave coming from source number two, is given by um, phi, which is K times delta X. Okay? So the phaser goes like this. If I draw my Argan diagram, Argan diagram, this is imaginary, this is the real part. So for wave number one, because the phi of wave number one is zero, so the angle between the real part and the phaser is zero. It's over here. So what is the length of my phaser? Can anybody help me just to see whether you guys understand it? E naught. Yeah, E naught, nice. Very clever, okay. Uh, and then I have another phaser. Let me draw this in red color. So the, this is the blue one. This is the red one. So here, the angle, if I dissect this, if I put this inside, E naught, E minus I omega T times E minus I phi. Am I right? Okay. So the angle should be uh, minus 
pi. So my phasor should be going down here yeah. because it is minus pi. So the angle, you know, the angle should be from here to here, from here to here. This is negative, this is positive. So the angle is negative. How about the length of my uh, second phasor? E naught, yeah, because uh, the amplitude of uh, the second wave is E naught. So if I draw the resultant vector from here to here, okay, the amplitude, this is the amplitude of wave number one from here to here. So from here to here is the amplitude of wave number two. So both of them are uh, E naught. But the amplitude of the resultant wave is the length of the resultant vector. So you have to use your uh, whatever mathematical uh, mathematical skills that you, that you have in order to find the length of this one. I'm just using the component, so the x component, x component. So for wave number one, what is the x component? This is the, for the blue phaser. Because it is pointing towards in the same direction uh, with the x component. This is the x component, this is y component. So it is E naught, E naught, and then you add with the x component of your second phaser. E naught plus, so the, the x component is you have the angle over here, so it will be uh, E naught cosine of minus phi but cosine of minus phi is cosine of phi so we just put it as cosine of phi so the y component is given by zero because the blue one is zero right so how about the red one should be uh, should be a uh, plus e naught sine of minus phi right but sine of minus phi you can you can bring the negative sign outside which is also equals to minus e naught sine of phi are you clear so it is clear now so meaning to say this is the real part of my vector here right and then this is the imaginary part of my uh, vector over here so the real part plus the imaginary part times i this is you know like your y this is your x this is a complex number, right? So if I put them together, E naught plus E naught cosine of I, this one, plus my imaginary, plus my imaginary component, which is minus E naught sine of phi. And then I put my imaginary number here. Am I right? And this is equals to... Uh, Okay, this is equal, if you focus at this one, this is equal to E0, E0 belongs to this one, okay, plus E0 times cosine of phi minus sine of phi i, right? So, you use the relationship here, E i theta equals to cosine of theta plus sine of theta i. Am I right? So you just replace this and but this one you have positive, this one is negative. So it should be um, E naught plus E naught E minus I phi, which is also equal to E naught 1 plus E minus I phi. Hmm. Isn't it the same with the previous one? If you use uh, the method here, the same one, right? So the, from this example, from this example, you will get the notion. Notion is, uh, I mean, oh, if uh, rather than doing it mathematically, we can also represent this by using the, the vector diagrams or the phasor diagrams. So if you want to work smart, if you want to learn smart, you have to learn smart. You use the concept that you have learned in your me uh, mechanics and then you apply it in your phasor diagrams. So you have consolidated your study time, right? So meaning to say you studied smart. So you don't have to go through both of them at the different times, then um, it will burden you. But instead, you apply, oh, this is something related to the mechanics, okay? But instead of uh, having a vector, but now, because it is in the organ diagram, the vector is because 
your problem is inside the x, y, z axis. You know, the Cartesian coordinates. Okay? But this one, instead of calling it as a vector, it is basically a phaser, phaser, because it is inside the Argan diagram. But the idea is the same, just like the vector addition. Okay? So, I mean to say, instead of uh, using the mathematics, I mean, using the uh, algebraic sum, you can also use the vector diagram to get the resultant amplitude. Doctor, I think it is easy because we have two waves. Then why don't we just add them together so I can do this, I can do this, do this easily instead of having to draw the diagram over here? Well, of course, you only have two waves. If we have many waves, let's say we have S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are six sources. And then uh, this is your point P. And then this guy is, is pointing towards this direction, this guy towards this direction. Uh, the line here is the light beam. Yeah, Light beam is pointed towards P. Light beam from source number 2 is pointed towards P. Another light beam towards P. Are you going to deal with the addition of the six uh, wave functions? No, it is complicated, my friend. It is complicated. That's the reason why uh, you, for for this example, if I draw the Argan diagram, this guy and this guy. Okay, for vector number one, I'm I'm doing this with reference to source number one. So we assume that the phi for wave number one is zero. And then uh, this is wave number one. And then you have to find out the phase difference for source number two and the phase difference for source number three, number four, number five, number six. Because the, the, because the distances are not the same, right? This one is shorter, this one is longer, even more longer, longer and even longer. This one is the longest one. Eh? The distance from here to here is the longest one compared to this one to this one. So if I draw this, this is wave number one, this is wave number two, this is wave number three, this is wave number four, this is wave number five, this is wave number six, for example. So the resultant amplitude is given by this one. So you do the vector addition to find out the components of my resultant uh, phaser over here. And then the length of that resultant phaser is basically the amplitude of your resultant wave. But now your amplitude is a complex number. So in reality, you the, the magnitude of the complex number is what you see in real life. 